here's a problem uh, with a half-life problem. So how long would it take 40 kilograms of cesium-137 to decay to 156 grams given the half-life being 30.17 years? So with half-life problems, you're either going to calculate the time it takes, um, like for example this one, you're going to calculate time, or you're going to calculate how much mass is left over after a certain period of time. So here we're starting out with 40 kilograms and if one half-life goes by you should have only 20 kilograms left. If another half-life goes by, that would be the second one, then you would have 10 kilograms. So you can see every time you cut it in half that's another half-life. So now we got two and a half kilograms, five half-lives, we'd have 1.25 kilograms, another half-life goes by, we'd have uh, 0.625 kilograms, but I'm just going to put 625 kilograms. We're still not at our target of 156. So seventh um, half-life, I get about 313, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be grams. Then, if another half-life by goes, we have 156 grams. Oh, well that's our target. So finally we reached our target. It took eight half-lives. I'm going to use three significant figures because I started off with three significant figures, I ended up, and here I have four, so I'm just going to use three significant figures. So we took eight half-lives to get to our target mass, but I want to convert half-life into years. So that means I need to get rid of half-life and keep years. Okay, well here's our conversion factor. One half-life is 30.17 years. So you see half life is going to cancel out and I'll get 241 years. So we can see that it took eight half lives to get to where we were going and there's 30.17 years per half life that corresponds to 241 years. And so that is the answer. If you look at part B, how much total mass remains? So what I'm trying to get you to do here is think about the law of conservation of mass. So you're going to have some mass loss due to e equals mc squared. But this is going to be a very small amount. So what I'm going to say is just that I'm not going to say 40.0 kilograms, but I'm going to say the total mass is going to be about 40 kilograms, because I really don't know how much mass would be lost over here. So again, we're simply considering the law of conservation of mass. So you might be thinking, well if we started off with 40 kilograms and now we only have 156 grams, where did the rest of it go? Well, the nuclear reactions that it undergoes has it transform into different things, different isotopes, giving off different kinds of radiation. And so, I just want to point out that I'm not making these up off the top of my head. How did I get the half-life being 30.17 years? Well, I looked over here for cesium-137. You probably won't be able to see it right here. But 137 is right here. Here's cesium-137. is 30.17 years. It also gives beta radiation. So if I know that... I can figure out at least what happens to cesium-137 partially. So 137, it gives off an electron, which is beta radiation, and what's going to be left over? So 55 is going to be equal to negative 1 plus 56. So element number 56 is going to be barium. 
So 137 is equal to 0 plus 137. So we can see the first step that happens is that cesium-137 transforms into barium-137 and it gives off beta radiation. Now I don't know if barium-137 is a stable isotope or whether it's going to decay quickly or not. If I try to find barium-137 over here, it doesn't have it here, so I don't really know. I'd have to go look it up on the internet or something. But the whole point about B is getting you to understand that there's a very small loss of mass due to E equals mc squared. So you start off with 40 kilograms in a box. After 241 years goes by, you have 156 grams of cesium-137 left. The rest of it turned into barium-137 and maybe some other decay products of this. And the total mass remains about the same.